Hello and welcome back, G-Man in the Studio Lab. Today I am converting a PH2 Superphaser guitar pedal to Eurorack. The PH2 is one of the most highly regarded phaser effects out there. It's capable of some deeply resonant sweeps. Turns out the pedal works very well when used directly with Eurorack audio. Usually you need a preamp module to boost signals for guitar pedals, but turns out that's not at all necessary for the PH2. It's a vintage pedal made in the 80s and 90s, either in Japan or later in Taiwan. Some viewers may cringe that I'm going to gut a vintage piece of gear. I have selected one that is scuffed and scratched and the original label was removed by previous owners and replaced with Velcro, which is commonly done. The pedal will still live on, only it will be in my Eurorack system. Let the teardown begin. We'll start by pulling the knobs, removing the nuts for the jacks and potentiometers, It will be helpful to remove the stomp plate. Just a couple of screws on the sides there. Usually there are four screws holding the back cover in place. Not today, only three this time. Not forgetting the one screw that holds the LED in place. The guts should come right out, but still held in place by the momentary switch and 9 volt battery lead. Just squeeze the tabs on the momentary switch and push it through. That makes it possible to push the 9 volt battery lead through as well. And here is the guts fully removed. Now it's time for a little planning. I think I can squeeze everything behind a 6 HP face panel. Reusing the existing pot board and just mount it to the panel as is. The PCB will need to be mounted perpendicular behind the panel. Obviously the existing ribbon wire won't twist into the new position, so it will become necessary to make all new wiring. Let's talk electronics. The pedal uses 9 volts of power, and Eurorack provides 12 volts of power. After downloading the pedal schematics, I've determined that much of the circuitry is dependent upon the 9 volt reference, and I don't want to replace a bunch of resistors to adapt the 12 volt reference, so I will need to step down the 12 volts to 9 volts. I have seen others use a 9 volt regulator for the tasks, which works fine, but I don't have that one laying around. Another way is to use a simple volt voltage divider. The only problem is it can't push the measly 20 milliamps current for the circuit to operate, so I'll need to add an op amp buffer to get the current required. If I use a dual op amp, I'll have another amp to accomplish some other task. How about adding an external CV to control the phaser depth? That would be cool. But it also requires a switch to change between the internal LFO and external CV. No problem. There will be plenty of space on the front panel. All I need to do is add a little breadboard located under the pop board, and I'm in business. I can even mount the jacks on that board down at the bottom. Great. I'll also need a little breadboard to accept the Eurorack power connector. It can go behind the main PCB. Now let's talk about mechanics. How am I going to mount the PCB perpendicular to the front panel? After doing a bit of research and checking the forums, I found a video by Hex Inverter where a cut piece of step flashing was used. I'll post a link of that video in the description. Only problem with that one is the PCB has absolutely no mounting holes. I had some small rubber grommets laying around and glued them in place using hot glue and some small spacers to keep the PCB from grounding out on the flashing. Time to put it all together. I made the panel out of thin aluminum, drilled the holes, and printed some graphics on transparent sticky sheet. Sorry to remove all existing wiring and replace it with all new wiring for the new positions of the PCB and panel controls. The new small PCBs were soldered and wired. The flashing was cut to size, holes drilled, and PCBs mounted in place. And there you have it. The PH2 adapted to Eurorack. Let's have a listen.
Thank you for watching, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.